saints of God, here we are again. And you hear me say it each Sunday I come, we are here by the grace of God. I say it because it's truly the truth that we come by the grace of God. Deacon Copeland again, William Copeland, senior deacon of the Greater Second Baptist Church, has come to lead us through the study of God's word. I need not have to tell you, you know the procedure by now, if you're a regular Sunday school attendant, but get your lesson outline out again and be ready that you follow us through as we journey through this, another study of God's word. <clears throat> Let us pray. After we, after we have prayer, we will give you our key verse for the morning. Let us pray. Precious Savior, we come unto thee thanking you for another opportunity to come into your holy presence again to study your word. We ask and humbly, O oh God, again for your leadership and your sustaining power as we journey through this discussion. You've been more than words can express to us through another week, and we are so grateful. So as we come, God, we are leaning and depending on thee. Yes, we've studied, but our minds are finite. And many times, oh God, things that we have studied slips us. But oh God, your power, your holy power can replenish us. Keep us now through this day. In the name of Christ, we pray, amen. The key verse, faith is the substance of things hoped for the evidence of things not seen. Coming out of the book of Hebrews, Hebrews 11, 1. If you will, we're ready now to touch each verse as we go. If you look at your printout, your lesson outline, you'll see outline number one says the meaning of faith. Hebrews 11, chapter 1 through 3. A under that says things hoped for, not seen. Verses 1 through 2. And B says things created. Verse 3. <clears throat> We're going to read verse 1 in our hearing place, and then we will touch it. <clears throat> Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. The phrase things not seen calls to mind the Potomac philosopher distinctions between the visible and the invisible, the material and the spiritual. Although Potomac philosophy is not Christian thinking, we can confirm that the spiritual realm is real, has consequences in the lives we live now, and affords greater hope than what we experience in our physical lives today. But what does it mean that faith is the substance of things hoped for, or that it is the evidence of things not seen? The meaning are much disputed, since there are various possibilities for translating the Greek words behind substance and evidence. It seems best to understand substance as something like basic truth or conviction. The substance is like a down payment that serves to give confidence that the full amount will be forthcoming. The word evidence, for its part, seems best understood as proof or even demonstration. Verse 
22. For by it the elders obtain a good report. report. The word for, for at the beginning of the verse connects this verse logically with the previous statement. Obtain a good report. Translated, translates a group Greek verb that means to witness. In other words, the faith of the elders has been witnessed and attested. The one who did the attesting was God. That is to say, God is the one who gives a good report as he witnessed the faithfulness of our spiritual ancestors. He, we're speaking of God again, is the one who <clears throat> validates their faith in realities that they could not see. Verse 3. <clears throat> On your lesson outline, it would say things created. Through faith, we understand that the words, that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. <clears throat> Speaking of the things not seen, it is faith that shows us the reality of divine creation by the spoken word of God. The phrase things which are seen were not made of things which do appear is without question confusion to our ears. A simpler way to say this might be so that what we see comes from what we do not see. What we see is not the sum total of reality. Nevertheless, their realities affect our lives even more. There are spiritual realities that are no less important even while they remain unseen with physical eyes by our faith in the evidence recorded in scripture, we know they are there. We are moving now to our second outline, which says examples of faith on your lesson outline. Hebrews 11th chapter, four through eight. A says, Abram, verses four. B says, Enoch, verses five and six. And C says, Noah, verses seven. <clears throat> we now come to verse four. We want to read it. By faith, Abram offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gift, and by it he being dead, yet speaketh. <clears throat> the focus now shifts from the creation of the universe to particular individuals who exemplifies the truth. The just shall live by faith. Abram is the first of 18 biblical phys 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 figures 
cited by name in Hebrew 11. Abram's most more excellent sacrifice is offered as a witness that he was righteous. But we wonder why it was more excellent. Some ancient commentators say that Genesis 4, 5 seemed to make a distinction between the person and the offering in such a way as to suggest Cain's attitude was not what it ought to be. Whatever the case may be, God testified of his gifts, validating them and thereby attesting to Abra's righteousness. But there is more. Intriguingly, mysteriously, by his faith, he being dead yet speaketh. The chilling statement of Genesis 14, the voice of thy brother, blood crieth unto me from the ground. Perhaps it is in how Abram's sacrifice demonstrates as a continuing witness that the just shall live by faith. Verse five. <clears throat> on your lesson printout, it's going to say Enoch. By faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found because God had translated him. For before his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God. Verse 5. Now the book of Genesis devotes only a few short sentences to Enoch. It was enough, though, for the writer of Hebrew to see great significance in what he said there. The word translated is used in an older sense that means something like taken away. The Genesis account notes only that Enoch walked with God and was not for God took him. Genesis 5, 22, 24. But it does not say why. The writer of Hebrew gives us a glimmer of a reason. He pleased God. Hebrew eleven six. That's our next verse. Let us read verse six. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Verse 6. The fact that Enoch pleased God has brought the writer to a general principle. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. Faith involves an approach he that cometh to God. There are two requirements of faith. The one who cometh must believe. Number one, that God exists. Hebrews 11, three above. And number two, that God rewards those who seek him. Belief in God must go further than merely acknowledging his existence. One is called to believe also that he is ready, willing, and able 
to reward those who search for him. That in terms implies that one must believe in the power and goodness of God. Verse 7. On your printout, lesson printout, it's going to be C, which says Noah, verse 7. We'll read in verse 7 now. By faith, Noah, being warned of God, of things not seen as yet, moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house by the which he condemned the world and became heirs of the righteousness which is by faith. Of significance, here is the phrase, things not seen as yet, which calls to mind the language of Hebrews 11.1. 1. Nor trusted in God, Regarding things nor could not yet see is indeed the essence of faith. That faith moved him, moved nor to act. Fear here should be understood as reverence for God, not as unqualified terror are the guilt that overtakes a sinner. It is easy to imagine Noah's neighbors laughing in condemnation as he built an ark. By in the end, it was Noah's active faith that resulted in the world being condemned. Peter refers to him, Noah, as a preacher of righteousness. Verse 8. As we read verse 8. By faith Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should after receive for an inheritance, obeyed, and he went out not knowing whether he went. <clears throat> Abraham acted on his faith, just like the others we have discussed. By nature, human beings want certainty and security. Most of the time, however, we are driven by fear, insecurity and uncertainty. The fears are so common to human experience that no example are needed. But chief among them, though, is the fear of the unknown. So many people have been held back from achieving great things for God because of this kind of fear. When God calls us to, to a task, as when he called Abraham to a higher mission, he calls us to trust in him and to follow his direction. Outline number three. <clears throat> Outline number three. On your lesson printout, it says, the goal of faith, Hebrews 11, 13 through 16. And A under that says, promises fall off. Verse 13, B, a country not visible. Verses 14, 15. C, a city God prepares, verse 16. We are reading verse 13. These all died 
in faith, not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off, and were, and were persuaded of them, and embraced them, and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. Verse 13. The discussion of Abraham and Sarah encompasses them, the implied, implied writer, inspired writer offered conclusions. These all died in faith. Does not mean that their faith killed them. Rather, it means they re remained faithful to the end of their lives. These faithful people died never having seen the fruits of their labor. All this is difficult to imagine. In our important world that expects instant gratification and quick results. But these strangers and pilgrims on the earth still speak in this regard, even though they are long deceased. This world was not their final home. They did not wander without a goal, though they were on a pilgrimage to God. Verse 14 and 15, we shall read. For they that say such things declare plainly that they seek a country, and truly if they had been mindful of that country from whence they came out, they might have had opportunities to have returned. Verse 14 and 15. Faith points these heroes forward as they sought a country not yet visible to them. Homesickness for that country from whence they came out would have be become an obstacle to their focus on the better land should they have yearned to go back. Perhaps some of them briefly entertained the idea. In the first century AD, Jewish Christians who were on the edge of abandoning their new faith were very mindful of their old country, namely the Judaism in which they grew up. They saw their, the promise of earthly relief from the various forms of social and economic pressures that they had faced in their decision to follow Christ. Verse 16, on your printout is going to say, a city God prepares, verse 16. In our closing verse, we see that better, the -E T-T-E-R, is a key word throughout the letter to the Hebrews. Instead of the New Testament 19 occurrence of the Greek word, 13 appear in this book, Hebrews. Even though these heroes of the faith could not yet see it, they acknowledged their destination superior, superior by their action. 
if they oriented their desires toward a heavenly country, they would find there the true and living God, the one who is not ashamed to be called their God, who has prepared for them a city, a permanent place to rest. God bless all verses of our text we have traveled through. We'll have a word of prayer, and then we will give you our thought to remember. Let us pray. Father, we come humbly again unto thee, thanking you for another discussion of your word. For truly, it has been medicine to our souls. Pray and trust we will go forth now and live in true faith to thee. In the name of Christ, we lift our prayer again. Amen. Our thought to remember. The faithful look for God's country. Let me read it one more time. The faithful look for God's country. God bless you and thank you for sharing in our study again on the second Sunday in the eighth month of the year, August the 8th. Thank you very much. <laughs>